I told my grandma, I said, but people really do laugh at my jokes. And she turned to me and she said, people do stupid things. <laughs> Brian Carter is a popular speaker. Brian Carter, let's look at this. So what can AI do for business in specific industries and niches? Now, the answer to that is almost infinite because there's so many, there's at least how many industries are there? 42, some official industries, and then narrow that down to different niches. We've got hundreds of different spaces where AI, some of the things that AI does in general to help you, whether it's brainstorming or creating or communicating, can be used in all these different um, industries, customer service and so on. But what about more specific things? So let's talk about healthcare, for example. AI can be used for diagnosis and treatment, which is interesting. It can outperform radiologists at spotting malignant tumors and guide researchers to construct cohorts for clinical trials. It can help you identify all kinds of patterns, carry out highly accurate diagnosis. And it's a nice tool to have because look, human doctors are great, but we're all fallible. And sometimes AI is too. So it's a nice way to get a second opinion for a doctor to get their own second opinion without having to go to another doctor or save some time and check it and say, that looks right. Okay, cool. You're doing the quality assurance on it. You're moving on, you're saving time. You're able to help more people. And of course, watch the profitability of your practice or hospital, because that's always a factor like it or not. It can improve patient engagement in healthcare and adherence to treatment plans. Just think if you're patient not only has access to a portal, which is great, but can chat with the AI about the treatment plan and ask different questions. There may be all kinds of things that come up, specific situations your patients are in that aren't covered in your documentation. And so it's like a smarter search engine because you don't want them necessarily going out there on the regular internet. You want to guide the kind of information that's going to go in there that you would recommend that's smart, right? And and based on your education and your research and all that kind of stuff. So that's a great resource for your patients and it saves time. There's probably an infinite amount of customer service you could do with a lot of different patients. So this helps them more while saving you time. Claims processing and other administrative activities, clinical documentation. Just think about how it's cool that you can transcribe your notes, but AI can also say, does that make sense? Where is their transcription error and fix that? Homonyms are, are an issue, words that sound alike. So, and what about robotic surgery in healthcare and automating administrative tasks that go along with that, personalizing treatment options, even predicting treatment success? I'm not going to go into this now, but researching a keynote for dentists and specifically dentists that work on TMD and, and sleep apnea. And there are all kinds of cool applications there. Again, some diagnosis, some treatment planning, and even bioprinting. A lot of different applications. So let's move on to finance, right? AI algorithms can determine loan eligibility, provide personalized options without bias and with high accuracy. That's pretty cool. They can help detect uh, fraudulent activities and manage risk, which is important in finance. And then automated trading, predictive analytics to help forecast market movements and make investment decisions. Now your day trader is not an out of work guy in his pajamas, it's your AI. <laughs> Again, all this stuff needs to be monitored and QA'd by human beings. But that's pretty cool to be able to do trading, to be able to do that massive amount of data analysis and then take action on it. It's good stuff. What else do we got? We got retail. We can have business intelligence, forecast industry shifts, make proactive changes to merchandising and business strategies. Also in retail, we customize and personalize to the shopping experience of the customer, right? And so imagine you walk into store and it's like, hey, Brian, I'm like, who's watching me? <laughs> Hi, uh, disembodied robot. How are you doing? Hey, look over here. There's that water you like. Oh, that is the water I like. Thank you. I'm going right here. What else might I be forgetting? You didn't bring a toothbrush, did you? I was looking in your bag. Why are you looking in my bag? That's weird. Okay. So customer personalization retail, that's cool. Manufacturing, 
collaborative robots that some people call cobots. I'm not sure why we would do that, but cobots work alongside human workers to enhance productivity and safety manufacturing, right? So you're on the line, you've got a robot doing this and you're doing that. It's pretty cool. You can be friends, you can high five, you can go for a drink afterwards. And I guess maybe it will have motor oil or something and you can just have a drink. So also in manufacturing, supply chain management, optimizing supply chain processes, handling large volumes of orders and materials more efficiently, materials more efficiently. Also in manufacturing, predictive maintenance. I think this is going to break on Tuesday. Well, that's pretty cool. It knows when your equipment's going to need maintenance, not just on a schedule, but by sensors inside. It can reduce downtime and operational costs. That's big. Insurance. We can do risk assessment. We can analyze meta massive data sources to inform insurance policies and premiums. Um, think about all that stuff that they do to analyze when things are going to happen to different people with their health and based on certain behaviors, it's all getting a lot smarter. Claims processing. AI can help handle a lot of the claims process, reducing the need for human involvement, which is good for everybody except for probably the claims processors. They're probably not very happy about that. But to be able to get more done and faster and, and then the customer can interact with the customer service chatbot that has that information it's a very affordable thing, very efficient. How about a couple more in the life sciences? We can facilitate drug discovery with AI, speed up the process by analyzing vast amounts of data, uh, discover new links between genetic codes, predict what drugs are going to work and how they're going to work. We're in crazy land now. It's very cool. Uh, clinical trials, we can help design them and manage them, improve their efficiency and improve the effectiveness of research, which we all want because it's very expensive. And there are so many things to research. We wish we could investigate more things, right? And more affordably, because then there are so many questions we haven't been able, able to answer because there's nobody to pay for the answer to that question. So that's good. General applications for AI, we can automate repetitive tasks across many industries, improve efficiency and productivity. We can analyze large volumes of data to extract patterns and provide valuable insights for informed decision making. And we can also help lonely people who need someone to talk to and no one wants to talk to them. They can just talk to a chatbot, an AI, right? I've done that. I'm not lonely. I'm Brian Carter. I'm a keynote speaker and I talk about AI. 